that had accounted for all the party's revenue. They determined to leave Quantum and start a new firm to commercialize their idea. Rather than let them leave by Quantum, however, Quantum's executives financed and retained 80% ownership of this spin-off venture called Shut Up and set the up in different facilities. It was a completely self-sufficient organization. So in this video, I'm using full self-driving in a hazy, misty, rainy day um, just to combat some of the FUD about how uh, full self-driving doesn't work or how cameras do not work in the uh, bad weather, I guess. Uh, as you can see, the windshield wipers turn on by themselves. The car is driving itself 100%. You can tell I'm not using the steering wheel. And in this video, actually, some interesting things happened. Uh, there's a hawk that flies in front of the car and full self-driving automatically detects it which is pretty cool. Also, there's a the car cuts me off and full self-driving automatically deals with that. And also, I run into some construction and again, full self-driving manages that. So some notes while watching the video. Um, I'm wearing orange Crocs, not only because they're stylish, but because it makes it easy to see my feet on the ground, not on the pedals. Something you'll notice during this drive is the this warning coming up about degraded full self-driving. No uh, that warning comes up just to remind you to be an extra, uh, super, to supervise in an extra cautious fashion. Um, it doesn't actually disable full self-driving or anything like that. It, everything still works. You just got to be extra cautious. Um, they've. My understanding is they're fixing that in the next release so that it doesn't pop up as much. As you'll see in this video, it pops up a lot. It's really annoying. There's a lot of debate about the term full self-driving. I always understood the term to indicate that the computer is fully in control of the car, which is actually what's happening here. The automation is completely controlling the throttle, the brake, and the steering. It is driving the car. My job is to supervise it. My job is to make sure it doesn't make a mistake. So Tesla, and rightfully so, to clarify the term full self-driving, added the term in brackets, supervised. So this is supervised full self-driving. Uh, although what you can see is that, although I need to supervise it, it does everything that it would need to do uh, to be out fully autonomous. Um, it is not fully autonomous yet. You have to watch it. Okay, so it does make mistakes every once in a while, and you have to be there to correct it. And there's actually a mechanism where you can feed back to Tesla when it does make a mistake, and you can actually explain verbally, hey, the car made a mistake, here's what it did. And they include that, and they use that in their next training. What makes full self-driving superhuman is that it monitors eight cameras, which are located 360 degrees around the car. It monitors all eight cameras at the same time, something that a human couldn't possibly do. Now there's three cameras looking forward. There's actually, there's five cameras looking forward. There's three behind the windshield and there's one on either side of the car looking forward. Then there's three cameras looking backwards, one on either side of the car and a single one behind right above the a license plate. So there's a total of eight cameras mounted all around the car and they're always watching traffic and they're always watching. Now they can read stop signs. They can read speed limit signs. They can obviously read the lines on the road. They can determine all of, they can even read, you know, a left turn only, right turn only, stuff like that. Uh, so they can actually read the signage that's on the road. What you're about to see is an example of full self-driving being superhuman. Now, I'm just driving along the road. Apparently, there's a hawk on the side of the road, and it flew up, and it flew right at the car. Now, I didn't even see it. I didn't react in time. The car slowed down appropriately. It slowed down aggressively, but it didn't lock up the brakes or anything like that. And you'll notice there's a, almost an imperceptible slight left turn that the car makes to get out of the way. And, and what's really fascinating is, is just how well it reacted to this situation. It, it didn't lock up the brakes. It didn't skid and stop. It didn't do anything crazy. It, it acted in a safe manner. It acted exactly like a human would, but it reacted so quickly to something that is so hard for a human to see that it's, it's really, truly amazing. So what you're about to see is the car make a technical error due to a human error. Now, the car is currently programmed to take me home. And to do that, it would go straight at this next intersection. 
after the car actually stops at the intersection, I reprogram it to tell me to take me to pick my wife up at the doctor. So the car's in the going straight lane. It's in the lane to go straight. There is, in fact, a left turning lane. The car is now reprogrammed to turn left. So what it should do is it should keep going forward and redirect and reroute and, and turn left somewhere up there. What it decides to do, though, is it decides to turn left at this intersection. Now, the reason this is perfectly safe is the car is hyper aware of its surroundings. It knows there's no other car there. It can see back. It sees there's no car approaching. I, too, the car indicated to me that it was going to turn left. So as soon as I saw that, I knew it was going to do it. And I, too, was hyper aware. I was looking, I was checking the mirrors and everything to make sure it was a safe thing to do. And so I let the car go ahead and do it. If you look right below the rearview mirror in the video above, you'll notice, you'll see the left lane pass, uh, the left turning lane pass by my left side. So as the car is coming to a stop, uh, I'm reprogramming it. Remember, it, it thinks that once it gets past this intersection, it's supposed to go straight, which is why it's in the lane it's in. I'm about to reprogram it to go pick up my wife at the doctor's office, which means it needs to make an immediate left turn. So it actually needs to turn left at the intersection. So what does it do? It's not in the left turning lane. So technically it shouldn't turn left. Technically what it should do is go forward and then you know, reroute up the street a little bit or maybe even do a U-turn or something. Instead, it's going to turn left. Now, the other really interesting thing to show here, and it's been throughout the video at these intersections, is just how well the camera can see and is tracking all the other cars and activity around it. You can see that in the virtualization. Note the, the left blinker is on, so the car is telling me what it intends to do, and it's telling everyone else in the world what it's intending to do as well. And the blind spot camera is on. So not only can I look in the side mirrors to verify, but I can also look on the screen to verify that, in fact, there's no one in that left turning lane that's about to turn. Right now, the biggest problem with full self-driving is some older parking lots don't seem to have any kind of um, mapping for their entrance and their exits. So a lot of times the full self-driving will take you to the wrong entrance. It still takes you to the right parking lot, but sometimes you'll end up 
in the back of the building or whatever. In this case, it actually did everything right, but I'm just suggesting, I'm just pointing that out as something that needs to be fixed. Not a fault of full self-driving, it's really just a fault of the maps. began studying discount meters <coughs> in 1957, while discounting was still in its infancy. By 1961... Thank you, Robot Car, for dropping me off at the doctor's office.